And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Luke 1, 28. We are a people called by God to positively impact and influence our generation. We are a living spring to a thirsty world, a place where imperfect people find true joy, genuine friendship, and practical truth for living from the Bible. We have entered a year of divine favor. This is a place where you are being singled out by God for special treatment at His exclusive and unquestionable bidding and pleasure. It means you have somehow found favor with God against all odds. You are stepping into a place where natural laws and normal course of events are altered, canceled, or suspended just for you. You will either be pulled out of the line or your line will become unique and different from others. You will stand out and be outstanding. God's supernatural favor flowing into your life is not based on your background, color, looks, or personality. God's favor is based on His Word and believing what it says about you. Favor will break through any barrier set before you. You will have favor with God and with men. Favor will help you achieve your goals and fulfill your divine destiny in Christ. God will raise men to invest their time, resources, and credibility over your destiny. By the favor of God, you will produce enviable results. There will be favor for properties, favor for promotion. Wherever you suffered harm and disadvantage, God will turn it into your advantage. You will receive favor for new heights and new levels. The wind of divine favor is released in your direction. God will cause your enemies to show you favor. People will pursue you to bless you. 2022 our year of divine favor. Get ready for the Word of God as we welcome our senior pastor, Reverend Kingsley Ayesu. Hello family, this is Kingsley here. First of all, I would like to say a big thank you for your support and for being a part of what God is doing through our ministry. You are so appreciated and I hope these messages are adding value to your life in a tremendous way. People sometimes ask, well, why should I come to Christ Covenant Chapel? Christ Covenant Chapel is a great church where God is developing people to positively impact our generation. We are a family-oriented church where everybody is somebody. We want to produce content, the life-giving content to help as many people as possible to change their lives. That is what our ministry is all about. Thank you for supporting us on Instagram, Facebook, and right here on YouTube. You are getting ready to listen to a life-transforming message. Thank you for your prayers and support. We love you and there's nothing you can do about it. Be blessed. All right, so we want to get right into the word of the Lord this morning. Uh, we're looking at Romans chapter 10, verse 13 through 15. Romans chapter 10, verse 13 through 15. 15. Um, if you are able, can you please be on your feet as we read the word of the Lord this morning. Paul's letter to the church in Rome. Amen. Hallelujah. He says, for whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whoever, whoever, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. All right, but then he comes on to a question how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed because to call you have to believe to call right now if um is it me please my 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 there is so much echo when 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 i pick up a phone to call you i i hope and i and i saw your call <laughs> it's funny i'm using you I, I, I am calling because I know that somebody is going to be on the other end to respond. Now, if I know that I am not going to get a response, all right, at least immediately or a call back, then I'm not going to call. Make sense? You, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, so, so Paul is saying that anyone who calls on the name of the Lord, whoever, Whoever, it doesn't matter, whoever 
the drug dealer, the prostitute, the ex-convict, whoever it is, the divorcee, the depressed, whoever, whoever means whoever, that calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. There is no discriminatory anything here. Whoever, it is men who sometimes we, we think we can decide who is qualified to be redeemed. But God does not discriminate. I have seen drug dealers become apostles. Come on, somebody, help me out. But, sir, I, I, I have seen a woman who has gone through five men and is on her sixth one. Go to a whole city and bring them to Jesus. That is what God can do. Whoever that calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But then he says, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? So for them to believe, they must hear. And then he goes on one step and says that, and how shall they hear without a preacher? Without somebody telling them. You, let, let go to 15. And how shall they preach unless they are sent? So this morning, I sent thee. Amen. By the authority. Amen. <laughs> vested in me. I send you. Amen. Go and preach. Amen. And tell your story. Amen. You see, all these things we read. I know you are standing for a while. Don't, don't worry. All these things we read, eh? Minister Nick, a lot of time, of course, it is theology, they are doctrines and things, but majority of them, it is just somebody telling their story. When Peter tells us about how they, they, they broke out of jail by the power of God because the church was praying, that is just their story. Today, people don't want to go because he doesn't know John 3.16. Just tell your story. He says, go and preach. I will show you something if I have time. But he says, and how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, he's quoting from Isaiah 52 here. He says that, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace. Who bring glad tidings of good things. Father, we thank you for your presence here. Have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Last two weeks, last week I was not here and Pastor uh, uh, Enoch spoke on the, uh, 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 the heartbeat of God. The heartbeat of God. The heartbeat of God. I hope you were blessed. Yes. Amen. And, and uh, last two weeks I started with the benefits of evangelism. The benefits of soul winning. And today I want to continue, I want to continue because, you know, yesterday I was speaking at a church in, in England and um, I was talking about the price. Talking about the price. One of the things I told them is that, you see, a lot of times we say that something is expensive. Now when you, when you, you, you are standing at a Ferrari uh, lot and they tell you the Ferrari is 250000 and you say it's expensive, by whose pocket? It, it, it is probably expensive by definition of your pocket. If Warren Buffett stands there, he can buy 10. And his pocket won't blink. So nothing really is expensive. Nothing is expensive. You understand what I'm saying? Nothing is expensive. Somebody will go and say, Oh, you bought that shoe for... $2,000, me, I would never buy a shoe for $2,000. Well, that's fine. That is you. Now, wh where am I going with this? The price I'm prepared to pay for something is based on the value I give that thing. 
So if you tell me that this shoe is 2000 and let's assume that money is not an issue, and I say I will pay for it, it means that somewhere in my cognitive thing, I am saying that this shoe, when I get it, the value it's going to give me is equivalent to that 2000 you are asking for. If I think it is not that worth, I will not pay for that much. So the price we are willing to pay for anything and everything is based on the value we place on that thing. Am I making sense? If I don't want to sacrifice for something, it is because I don't think the value in return is going to be equivalent to the sacrifice I'm making. That is why I'm spending two to three weeks to tell you about the benefits of soul winning so that you will place the right value on it so you will pay the price to win a soul. Because listen to me, if we are going to win souls, it's going to cost you something. You see, this 11,000 we are putting into this new cameras, if it was left for us here, we see it live. We won't make that investment. But for the sake of the hundreds and thousands of people that are now connecting to us on social media, it has become necessary and absolutely important that we invest that kind of money. Why? Because I am placing that kind of value on them to make sure that they get a quality picture and enjoy the service because we are saying that you are worth that much. Because if I don't think they are worth that much, I will invest that kind of money. Because that is a whole lot. Even to Warren Buffett. Now, let me ask you, how much is your uncle worth to you? I'm talking about the drunkard. Do you know there are certain uncles we have family reunions and you are praying they won't show up? Because the moment they show up, something, they will always say something to mess up the party. The, I mean, sometimes as a family secret is just going to come out. I, I used to have this uncle. He, he died. <laughs> he was a drunk. I mean, <laughs> and the funny thing is, I don't know, God is an interesting God. He died a few months, I think a couple of years after he had given his life to Jesus. He stopped drinking and everything, um, and, but, but his, his, his system was messed up, completely messed up, and so he died afterwards. But, you know, he will, he will get drunk, and then he will come home, and then my father was his older brother, and he just talked any nonsense to my, my dad. And so my dad told him that, listen, if you are going to come here and be talking like this when you are drunk, when you drink, don't come. And he said, my dad said, you, see, you know what? One of these days, you are going to die. This thing is going to kill you. And if it kills you, I won't bury you. He said, you know, bro, you know what I'm going to do? When I'm ready to die, I'll come and die in your house. And don't bury me. Just leave me there. Don't bury me. <laughs> what, what do you do with somebody like that? And he, and he said, one day he said, one day he was having a, a, a walk with me. Walk with me. He, said, he said, you know, Sometimes it's not a drink, oh, it's just I want to say some things to your dad and I just use the drink. I know what I'm saying. <laughs> Everybody has one in the family. Yours may not be a drunk, yours may be perverted in some way. Yours may be a problem causer. Just cause problem with everybody. But listen, even that person is valued in heaven. Jesus died for that uncle. Are you hearing me, somebody? Now, my question, my previous question is, what value do you place on that uncle? Because if you place the same value heaven places on him, then you will have a desire and a yearning inside your heart for him to be saved and come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Are you still here with me? Tell somebody about Jesus. 
Call that uncle and tell him about Jesus. Call that auntie and say, oh, ask for this, my uncle. Pastor, even, even I, there's this comedian in Nigeria. The guy looks so funny. His face. I mean, anybody listening, he used to have these dreads. He cut it off. And, yeah, I don't know. He, no, not basket mouth. Oh, basket mouth is beautiful. He's handsome. This guy is, I can't say he's ugly because it's life, but, but he doesn't look really nice. He looks funny. And then he said, he said one day his, his pastor was uh, serving communion like we did this morning. And he went and he took the communion and then his pastor looked at him and says that he shouldn't come for communion again. He said, why pastor? He said, because the way you are eating the bread, it's like you are happy Jesus died. He said, how? He said, the way you are smiling. And then he said, the pastor did an altar call and he came to give his life to Jesus and the pastor said, you should go and sit down. He said, oh, how, pastor? He said, it's not every life Jesus wants. Yours, go and sit down. <laughs> but, but people... Every life is important to God. Every life is valuable to God. Everybody is qualified to hear the gospel. They cannot believe, and if they don't believe, they cannot call on the name of the Lord. If they don't call on the name of the Lord, they will not be saved. And they cannot believe until somebody preaches to them. That is why we are here. If it was all for heaven, we would have gone a long time ago. You see, my younger brother told me this many years ago when he started this church. And I have learned. I have learned very, I mean, I learned it the hard way. He said, I want you to think of church as a business. And I said, as for you, the, the guy sees dollars in everything. I'm not even kidding you. Anything in, in this life, he will associate money to it. He said, I want you to see church as a business. You see, but then later on, I figured it out. I realized, Pastor, we are business people. We are businessmen and businesswomen. We are selling a product. That product is called Jesus Christ. And we are salespeople. How we market it will determine who buys it. And some of us, I have told you last weekend, we have, we have sold Jesus wrong by our attitudes, by our behaviors, by our, 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 our idiosyncrasies, our behavior at work, our behavior in the family. You don't talk to this brother. You don't talk to this auntie. This, your father is this and that. We don't talk to... And because of that, we can't even witness to them to tell them about Jesus. And because of that, let me ask you, do you really believe this faith you talk about? Do you really believe there is a heaven and there is a hell? Do you really believe in Jesus Christ? I was listening to this woman on, 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 on Facebook uh, um, last night. Uh, um, um, as at 3 a.m. I, I, was, I was still up and uh, I was just like, I just, you know there are times when you just don't feel like doing anything productive. I just didn't feel like reading, praying, nothing. I had prayed. That, and I just didn't, I was like, I, so I just went on Facebook. And this woman was talking on radio, talking about the fact that Christianity is not really a religion and that it's a historical um, um, something. And you, you heard it. And that they changed things to, to bring it to Africa for us. And I said, you see, and I said, and listen to me. I don't, wherever you are, give it to her. I don't care. I said, listen, you are one of the dumbest that I have heard in this generation. Because, no, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not trying to be funny. The, the moment you make a statement, that the Bible is a historical book. You are saying that it means it's a collection of incidents that actually happened. So what you have really done is to confirm what the Bible is telling us. Because history is not imaginations. So the moment you tell me it's a history book, you have confirmed Jesus Christ died and rose again. <laughs> so then, if an intelligent person like me listening to you, 
I confirm with Job, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. The moment he made those statements, I said, next. I don't have to listen to your next statement because you have proved to me that you are not worth my time. It is like I picked up this book by an atheist. And you know how people write books and acknowledge me and say thank you. So, so, so. And the first thing in front of the book, I'm, I've forgotten the guy's name. He said, I, he said, I thank God I'm an atheist. <laughs> and you see, I don't even blame him. I blame the publisher who published that book for him. Uh, you read through this. Who edited the book? Who, and you publish and the first statement as an atheist writing a book to debunk Christianity. And your first statement is that I thank God I'm an atheist. So we are saints people. We are marketing Christ. Let's package him well. Listen, it's all about packaging. I have lived in America long enough to realize it is all about packaging. Some salesperson will sell sand for you whilst you are standing at the beach. It's packaging, man. So, it is important for us to present ourselves as a living sacrifice. Acceptable unto God. He says it is our reasonable worship unto him. Romans chapter 12. Listen, until you come to a place where you realize that wherever you go, you are ambassador of the kingdom of God. You represent Jehovah God. And that when you speak, heaven has spoken. And that when you act, heaven has acted. That is why when you do things a certain way, people say we won't go to church because they saw a Christian. So then can I also put it to you that somebody will also come to Christ because they saw you. So let us be good salesmen and saleswomen and market and package Jesus nicely. Are you understanding? Let's, let's package him nice. The women will understand this one. Package it. This is his package, you know. I, I, I want to say something, but in, in private I will say it to people, but in public I can't. You know, Pastor, we are getting to the point where it's becoming very dangerous to just marry a man or a woman without investigation. Because on the day of your wedding, you'll be so disappointed, eh? When they take off the wig, take off the hip pads, the tummy tuck, the extensions of the pastor, and they take off the eye additions. And the man says, ah, If we are taking things off, then me to let me take off my teeth. He also takes it off, put it in a then you will know what you've gotten yourself into. <laughs> are, you, are you still here with me? It's packaging. It's packaging. It's packaging. I mean, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, it's important that as part of the disclosure. <laughs> Susan Ayuka, what do you think? As part of the disclosure. You know, you say, you say, you know what? Because listen, I am a man. I'm, I know men. You see, men, we are, we are moved by what we see. And so the man probably came to you and forget about character and say, oh, I married her because she's a good girl. No, you married her because something about her physically was attracted to you, period. That, because I'm not talking to you Unless something physically caught my eye. Let's be real. This is church. Eh? Stop all these spiritual things. But I prayed and, and the Holy Spirit says she's the one. You are lying to yourself. You, listen, you can lie to all of us, but don't lie to yourself. So, 
So as part of this disclosure, I just tell them and you see, because maybe you are like some of us, we like long hair. So if the hair is not yours, say, you know, I don't know what you like, but the hair is borrowed. Just so, I just want to put it out there. If you are the type that likes volumes, there has been all kinds of paddings and additions. It's disclosure. It's disclosure. Disclosure. It's disclosure. <laughs> so, on my wedding night, I am not surprised because you told me. Full disclosure. See, a man was... I don't know. Why, why am I so excited this morning? I'm, I'm supposed to talk about benefits, right? <laughs> Come on. Hallelujah. A young man was dating this young lady and kept telling her, I don't have anything. All I have is you. All I have is you. All I have. He kept saying, all I have is you. All I have is you. And then on the day of marriage, they married and he took her home. And the guy didn't have anything. Nothing. Even, even a chair to sit on. Nothing. That girl said, ah, but you don't have anything. He said, but what do you think I was telling you? When I said all I have is you. I don't have anything. It's you. That is full disclosure. All I have. <laughs> we are witnesses. We are witnesses. And... Uh, <laughs> You know, a witness is, 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 is commonly understood as someone who testifies on behalf of a person or to an event that he or she has seen with their own eyes or for which the person has first-hand knowledge. Becomes a witness. You get what I'm saying? Becomes a witness. So, so pay attention to, 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 to what I'm sharing with you. Uh, maybe I'll just do two of the 12 points and we'll continue. Um, I realize I have one more month and I don't have a whole lot to share. So I have to, little by little. So every Sunday I'll have something to say. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. So to be a witness, that's what Jesus Christ has said. Go into the world and be my witnesses, right? So to be a witness, it means that you must have seen something or heard something or have uh, uh, a first-hand knowledge of an event. You get what I'm saying? That is why to be a witness for the Lord, you don't necessarily have to know scriptures. So John the Apostle writes and he says that it is the things that we have seen with our eyes, touched with our hands. We have experienced our own self. We had this experience. Those are the things we are testifying about. That is what has made me a witness because what I was there, I saw it. You see, I can tell you the story of Abraham and Sarah and how Sarah became pregnant at the age of 90 and, whatever, and Abraham had a son at the age of 100. I can tell you, but that is somebody else's story. But when I share my testimony with you, you cannot debunk it. It is my story. You understand what I'm saying? When I tell you God is good, pastor, I'm not lying. He's been good to me. How can you deny the fact that he's a healer when I am telling you that he healed me? You can bring all the argument you want. But listen, the man with an argument is never, let me put it this way, the man with an experience is never at the mercy of the man with an argument. When I have my experience, you can have all the argument you want. I know that I know that I know that he saved me. I know. I was there when he saved me. I was there. So we are a witness. I, 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 I can even stand here and blaspheme and say that, hey, I am not sure about, 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 about Acts chapter, uh, 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 is it 18 or 17? Or chap I think chapter 16 when, when, when Paul, uh, uh, Paul and Silas were brought out of jail. He said, I wasn't there. I wasn't there. Simon, I wasn't there. I believe that it happened because they wrote and said this happened. I believe the Bible, but I wasn't there. I'm being very honest with you. I wasn't there. But I was there when he picked me out of the miry clay and set my feet on a solid rock. I was there. I saw it. That is my testimony. That is my witness. I can tell that to 
to somebody and not have to know where acts of apostles happen i know that i was going nowhere to happen and then grace found me i know i am what i am by the grace of god i know that if it had not been for the lord who was on my side where would i have been i know that somewhere somehow he reminded himself and remembered me and picked me and my family and we stand today because grace located us I know that I am a witness to that. So Paul said, hey, when we came to you, we did not come to you, we did not come to you in the eloquence of man's wisdom, but we came in the demonstration of the power of God, which we have experienced. This is my story. Praising my Savior all the day long. Oh, this is my story. This is my song. Praising my to visit his father on a ship uh, this man was messed up drugs women everything you name it he did it and john newton was a mess uh, when his father died he, th this woman picked him up uh, and used him as an animal uh, put a rope around him and dragged him around i am talking physically not spiritually treated him like an animal not, not too long after the, the captain of the ship died and, and john newton became the captain of this ship bought it And he started trading in the indomitable trade of slavery. Going to Africa to buy and sell slaves. Specifically going to Sierra Leone. One day he was caught in the middle of a storm. And he remembered the gospel his mother preached to him. When he was a kid. And he said, God, if you are really truly alive. If you save me in this storm. I will serve you for the rest of my life. And a supernatural hand from nowhere. Calmed the seas. Calmed the storm. And a man was saved and after that he wrote a song that today we all sing it listen we think it is an, an, a, a wonderful song it was just a man's story amazing grace how sweet the sound that sings he said, I was a wretch. I was a wretch and he saved me. I was lost, Pastor. Praise God! Praise God! 
days that taught my heart to fear. He said, I don't fear God because he's fearful. I fear God because of grace. Somebody shout yeah! Please sit down, please sit down, please sit down. Please sit down. Let me, let me, let me do this. this, this. Ah, because, because uh, media will be upset with me if I don't give them any of my points I, I, I can because you know all I'm saying to you this morning is that soul winning is a profitable venture oh, nice. it's a profitable venture it's a profitable venture he says that point number one let me go through just two points and I'll get out of here we are promised two points Mimi two points okay number one so winning protects your feet. Isaiah 52 verse 7. He says, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring you. So winning. Bible says that when a man's ways are pleasing to the Lord, he will make sure that even his enemies will be at peace with him. The steps of a good man, they are ordered by the Lord. He says, if you are a soul winner, God will order your steps. That is why, Pastor David, that is why I know I'm not going to die anytime soon until I'm done. Because I am an asset to heaven. I'm not a liability. Heaven needs me here. Oh, heaven needs me here. Because I'm a threat to hell. Oh, yeah. So heaven needs me here. So if heaven needs me here, then heaven has to make sure that I am safe to continue to continue. That is why there are some people who thought I was gone. No way. I ain't going nowhere. No way. Oh, uh, I'm going to be on you like white on rice. I'm, I'm all over you. I'm here. I ain't going nowhere. I am so far. But, but <laughs> Didn't the master, I don't have time to get into it. Didn't the master say that you go and we'll come to it in a little bit, maybe next week. He says you go and as you go, one thing I promise you, I will be with you till the end of time. I will be with you. You will carry my presence with you because you are going to serve me. Why should God let some enemy attack and, be, and defeat me and win when, when heaven needs me like this? Oh, come on. You, you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Yesterday, just yesterday, Saturday, I was supposed to, and, and, and apart from a meeting we had, we have, I had to speak at two other places. And then heaven will just watch you destroy me. How? I, it, where I come from, there is this adage that everybody protects their hand that helps the hands to give, to produce eggs. I don't know how to say it in English directly. So, thank you. So every farmer, if this, this um, the, 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 the male ones, it's all cock, right? Is it? Uh, it's a cock. Okay. 
cock. And that's what somebody said, cock. Okay. <laughs> so the cock. That is helping the hens to produce eggs. You don't kill that one. Unless you are a foolish farmer. You keep that one alive for as long as it can live. That is why heaven will keep soul winners. Are you understanding somebody? You understand what I'm saying? That is, it is a benefit that comes with soul winning. For as long as you win souls, heaven will keep you here. Let me. Number two. This is, this is my favorite one. And then I'll close on this. Mimi. Five. You know, you know, pastor, the day I realized that I am an ambassador of heaven, I settled a lot of things in my life. Because I realized that, no, the ambassador to, 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 to Ghana, yeah. where you come from, right? Yeah. The United States ambassador to Ghana. Yeah. It is not Ghana that takes care of him. No. It's United States. If you touch a hair on his head, the whole United States is in, is in battle with not the one who touched but the grounds upon which it happened, the whole of Ghana will be in trouble because they touched the hair of the ambassador. Of her. So if I'm an ambassador of heaven, that is why he said, even the number on your hair, I have numbered it. I didn't count it. He said, I numbered it. Because if I count it, I can say you have 20,000 uh, pieces of hair on your head. But I don't know which one. He said, I have numbered it. So in the one that dropped today, when you're combing your head, it was to God. It wasn't just here. It was said number 127 fell down. That is how important you are to God. I realize the ambassador's children's school fees, he doesn't have to worry about it. The country pays for it. The security system. The answer that I won't even go to the allowance. I'm just talking about the, 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 the book. I remember years ago, you know, where I grew up, we were close to the American embassy. And if you come from where I come from, don't ask me. There is, there is a theory that has been generated in the country that professors at the universities have accepted it as a word. It's called doomsology. Dum let me explain to you, those who don't know. It is where the lights go on and off at will. It's like when you are going to have a party, you have to go to the electricity corporation and pay money to somebody. Else in the middle of your party, the lights will go off. That's how amazing the country is. And lights went off. Everything went off. And when I stand at the balcony of our house, I can see the American embassy pastor guess what full light everywhere pitch dark that embassy had light I said this is not right but that is because he is the ambassador of the United States Ghana ain't got nothing on him it can be as poor as whatever but he will be as rich as the country he's coming from heaven will take care of soul winners So, number two, let me give you number two. Soul winners, they shine like stars. Soul winners shine like what? Come on. So, when you are a soul winner, it makes you a star. Daniel chapter 12, verse number three. Daniel chapter 12, verse three. This is Bible. I'm not making this up. He says this. Those who are wise shall what? shine then he goes further to explain it he says like the brightness of the firmament he says and those who turn many to righteousness they will shine like the stars for how long forever and those who do what turn men to righteousness those who save souls they will shine I'll leave you with that thought we'll continue next week Stop trying to make yourself shine. When you win souls, heaven will make sure you shine. Amen. 
heaven will give you notoriety. People who don't want to know you will know you. People will hear your name. Are you understanding what I'm saying? You know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying this just to give a message. I'm saying this because, listen, if you know where I came from, you will know that serving God is good. I'm telling you, Pastor David. Yes, sir. Whoever thought, whoever thought, whoever thought, Pastor, that I can even string two sentences together correctly without making a mistake. Whoever thought that continents will be watching this village boy? Whoever thought? Whoever thought? Whoever thought? Whoever thought that you will do just one message and after that message you get five calls. Pastor, can you come and preach for us in our church? All over Europe. And I have an accent in case you haven't figured out. But when God lifts you up, no one can bring you down. When Jesus says yes, nobody can say no. It is the lift. He's the lifter up of our heads. It's God. You work for the Lord. And Bible says that you will shine like the star. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. My friends, I pray that today's broadcast will enable and empower you to live a life of impact. God has a life of impact for you. Keep on making impact. I'm out of time. I've got to leave you. But I'll see you next time. Until then, continue impacting your generation. Thank you again for your support. Take care, my friends. You are here to positively impact your generation. Shalom.